I'm your host, Sopnil Bhartiya, and my next guest is Antonello Monti, professor at the Aachen University. And today we are going to talk about SONIA or SOCNO, depends on how people say a uh, project. Uh, first of all, Antonello, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you. My pleasure as well. Let's start with the history of the project and also the name, uh, the acronym. Uh, it originated as a European Union project, but later it became a Linux Foundation hosted project. So quickly tell us the history of the project. The project originally was um, a project funded within the so-called Horizon 2020 project, European Commission. So these are typical projects where industry and university work together on developing what are called research and innovation action. It means we take technology from basic uh, development at university level and try to bring it up to closer to application with industry. And Sonio um, targeted the need for distribution grid operator to have a new concept of platform. Uh, we have to keep in mind that with the penetration of renewable significantly growing day by day in Europe, but also in other parts of the world, the role of the distribution grid operator is significantly changing. And they need new concepts for the grid automation. They actually need grid automation because in the past, their level of automation was rather limited, it was a moving from a passive to an active distribution network. And that's where the need of a modular platform became quite clear. And that's what the commission recognized selecting our proposal uh, for a project. Now, uh, to stress the role within the Linux Foundation, we changed the interpretation of the acronym and is service-based open source grid automation platform for network operation of the future. So we kept the same philosophy, but we increased the stress on the fact that it is an open source architecture. What is critical uh, here is also the first part of the name, service-based because the architecture is based on microservices. So the idea is really to have a modular concept in which different services can be plugged in into the same data bus. When we say it's, uh, it's now a uh, service-based open source grid automation platform, uh, can you go a bit deeper into the tech aspect? What do we mean by service-based you know, uh, grid automation platform? Open source part, we understand. So what we mean is, if you take the automation, there are several functions that may be needed for the grid operator. And depending on the grid operator, you may have a different selection of those functions. One example of this function could be state estimation. And um, each of those services or these functions are organized from a software perspective as microservices. There are microservices that are integrated in a common data bus. And this common data bus can be created with different uh, solutions. Uh, for example, using MQTT or using Kafka. But the idea is always this modular microservice based concept in which different services access the same data bus. When the project moved into the Linux Foundation, how did the project evolve or change or the community changed? And then we can also talk about what kind of governance is there for the project under the Linux Foundation. Yeah, well, we were open source to begin with. So we only had to streamline our licensing to be sure that uh, all the components are coherent from a license perspective. This is something really important within the Linux uh, Foundation. And the community expanded. Originally, only the partners of the project in the European original project were involved. Now we have more partners also from, from America. So for example, from Canada or from the US, we have uh, EPRI. For example, as partner, we are university in, in Canada involved with us, and we are expanding uh, even further. So the, the value of bringing this to the Linux Foundation is really to upscale the community and uh, be going beyond the limit of Europe. And because at the end, those, proje those problems, the one we want to address with this platform, are actually worldwide. So distribution grids are more or less the same in the different countries. And the Linux Foundation allows us to have a global perspective, which increases the possibility to have standard solutions globally, which reduce cost at the end, which is beneficial for the implementation. Uh, for the government's perspective, we are organized as any other Linux Foundation project. So we have a 
technical uh, board coordinated by one person working in my research group, uh, Dr. Marcus Mirz. We have periodic meeting in which we define the the next steps and, and next components and evolution needed for the platforms. And everything obviously is managed in a committee. So let me say in a form of democratic uh, sense. The other important point is that we are still feeding the platform with other projects. So currently I'm coordinating another European project called Platone. And um, some of the new components, uh, Platone is fully using the Sonio platform. And some of the new components that are part of the work in Platone will be integrated in the uh, LFE project in the future. So there are different ways to feed uh, the open source platform thanks to other funding also coming from other sources. Can you talk about the community around it? As you said, it was already an open source project. There was a community, but then you said that it also expanded beyond Europe and you know there is a kind of a community in the North America as well. So talk about how the community has grown and who are the core contributor to the project. We as university, as WTH Aachen, is the, the main contributor because we, we developed originally the platforms. Uh, we have um, some of the or the partner we had in the original project still involved, um, like EPRI, which was a partner in the Sonia project. We have some new coming from the other project like Platone, like uh, RSA, which is a research institution in, uh, in Italy. But we also have uh, the University of Alberta that is vice versa, a partner from Canada, as I was mentioning before. Right now, we are also <clears throat> expecting a growing role of industry involved. So grid operators that are planning to use the platform are considering to enter the project. And also some of the major vendors that are part of the Linux Foundation see this platform as an interesting opportunity. So we expect, I mean, we are a rather young community, but we expect in less than a year to, to grow very significantly because a lot of key possible partner uh, declare very strong interest for the initiative. Can you also talk a bit about what other open source projects do you uh, as a Sonia project leverage either from the Linux Foundation or LF Energy or from other open source foundations of projects? We deliver the project in terms of containers. So we use open source container technology um, within the, the Sonia project. Um, we use open source for the MQTT, from Kafka. Um, so all those components are coherent open source license that build the architecture. On top of this, let me say part of, let me call it operating system of the platform. And then we provide in the Sonio concept, the specific power engineering related services like can be fault location identification, state estimation, and so on, which are really specific. But we don't reinvent the wheel. So creating this architecture based on microservices is not unique of power engineering. So we, we use things that are already successful in the market, like the one I mentioned before. If you look at this project, from tech side, uh, or the, from the source code side, or the, from the project side, what does the project look like? Here we have a, a variety of situations in terms of release because we have the release within the Linux Foundation and also we have the release within the, the Platone project. So for the Platone project, we have a release of the platform coming very soon because we have uh, some demonstration project that will adopt um, the Sonia platform in the real field before the end of the year. And um, so these are very very soon coming. What we provide are full installation so that uh, you can download the, the container and, and run. So that's uh, what we provide on, 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 this, on the GitHub. It's not that you have to restart, compile and adapt, but you just take the image as container and is ready to go with different configuration of services already enabled. When we look at service-based, you know, grid automation platform, what are some of the major challenges that you're 
seeing today in the market because as we have had this discussion a couple of times the whole energy sector is transforming because the digital transformation is happening the way we uh, consume electricity or we are becoming producers because we have those solar panels people have batteries in their houses it is changing so talk about what are the challenges that a sonia project is tackling and what are the challenges that you look at hey this is something we still have to solve well what we are tackling as a challenge is the need to have software solution which are scalable and they can fulfill the need to be, let me say, active at the edge. Exactly going in the direction of what you just said. We, the users are becoming the key element, the key player in the electrical grid, which means the focus of the action is moving to the edge and the automation should do the same. And Sonio as a scalable platform and also the platform that can be deployed in a distributed fashion. So we, you can have multiple instances in several substations and are organized then hierarchical. So we have the version centralized and the version distributed both really possible. It really fits this requirement. So in that respect, I think we are tackling the key questions right now on the evolution of distribution grid. On the other hand, as a philosophy and concept is really an evolution for the sector. We are used to having energy for the automation monolithic platform centralized, provided by a single vendor. While what we provide here is a completely open, scalable uh, solutions, not necessarily centralized, this definitely modular. Modular means not only that I can pick the components I want, but also that within the same platform, I can have different providers of software from different vendors. These are concept that in the strictly IT um, field are normal, but are perceived like revolutionary, I would say, in the energy uh, scenario. And the big challenge here is to convince first the grid operator, this is the way to go to build a rapidly growing and fast growing automation concept for distribution grid. On the other hand, to make the major vendor understand that this should not be perceived as a threat, but as the only way to speed up the innovation as we need to tackle the challenges in the grid. Who is the consumer or user of this project? Are we talking about the distribution companies? Or are we talking about the producers? I think major customer would be the um, distribution grid operator. Um, directly. So they can have their own instance of the platform running as I say, in the control room or distributed at the edge in their substations. There is also another form of running this uh, platform, which is um, when we started the project, this was done in cooperation with Ericsson. So Ericsson is a major provider of 5G technology. So one idea is the platform could be run in the base stations of the, so in the edge cloud directly embedded in the 5G network. Under that vision, also, telecom operator could be the one physically owning the platform and providing the platform as a service to a grid operator. So there are basically two business models that we envision, one in which the grid operator keeps complete ownership of the platform, and the second one in which the grid operator works in a close cooperation with a telecom operator, and the telecom operator provide the IT infrastructure with the, so the, the the, the real IT infrastructure and the software on top. So it's a full software as a service and then automation as a service that the telecom could in principle provide. Antonello, thank you so much for taking time out today and explain uh, this project in depth. And as I said earlier, I would love to have you back on the show. And as you said, you know, a new release will be coming out later this year and we will love to, of course, discuss that release. Uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you today and thank you for your question. Very nice questions.